Hello and welcome to this SUSECON 23 session, SUSE ALP Action. Today we will let you see how ALP can be used to secure your environment. I'm Frédéric Rosa, I'm one of the ALP architects, and with me we have Yo, who is architect for confidential computing. Let's see what we will talk about today. Two topics. Full description, why it matters and how it is used on AMP, Adaptable Linux Platform. And York will talk about confidential computing, how to protect data in use with both encryption and attestation. So first, full disk encryption. Full disk encryption has both benefits and trade-offs. It allows to protect system for both unauthorized access data and the system itself and it also ensures that the system cannot be tampered with the system the entire system is protected and not just a few parts of the system but the big trade-off of full disk encryption is that this uh, protection is only applying when the system is offline what do we mean by that is once the system is booted you don't see anymore the encryption which means you cannot add additional access protection on, or on data on, or on files when the system is running. For that, you need to do additional encryption on specific files or partition that you will mount or unmount on demand. The other big trade-off of full disk encryption is it requires manual entry of the password to unlock the partition or you need to use some other tricks like putting a password or passphrase on a USB stick which is plugged on the system. This is not really convenient. With ALP, Adaptable Linux Platform, we want to make encryption as transparent and easy as possible. For that, we are combining several technologies together. First, we use SecuBoot, so it's a UEFI um, feature which allows to ensure that the bootloader and the entire boot sequence is pristine coming direct from SUSE, untampered. Second, we also use a trusted platform module, TPM, TPM2, to be precise, a TPM2 chip, to store some data which will be used to unlock the system without having to enter the password manually. Of course, this TPM unlock will be disabled if somebody tried to tamper the boot chain, either the bootloader, the kernel, etc. But we are making sure that if the boot chain or the system is updated by proper maintenance update, the TPM chip will be updated with the new uh, measurement of the boot system and an automatic unlock will still work. Of course, again, we want to make sure you can still manually unlock the system with a password. So let's see a small demo on full disk encryption on ALP. Here I have a VM running the image from uh, the March prototype of ALP Micro. This is an encrypted image. I just uh, booted it, did stop there at the bootloader and didn't do anything. So you can basically replicate that uh, whenever you want, at home or at your, at your workplace. So I'm starting the, the, the boot. So this is a pristine image. It has been already encrypted with a known keys. And it's going to use these known keys to uh, decrypt the system. Now it's complaining because I didn't provide automated install uh, information. So we are going to do things manually and we are going to enter our own credentials. Almost there, that's it. So now we have a welcome screen. I'm going to switch to French keyboard layout. The license, accepting it, a time zone in Europe, and then entering a very secure root password twice. 
the system has, has um, uh, detected that we are we are using an encrypted uh, image, and we have a TPM chip in this uh, uh, VM settings. So we are going to use both. What is going first is dropping the old uh, predefined um, encryption key, and now we are going to create a new one using my recovery uh, password. So for now, I will use Suzacon, for instance. And what's going on now is that based on the boot measurement of the system and this uh, uh, manual key, some, uh, some data are put on the TPM chip, which will be then used to automatically decrypt um, the system. Right now, what's going on also is that we are re-encrypted the uh, root file system with these new uh, keys. So it is very fast because it was already encrypted. We are just changing the keys. We are almost done. Three, two, one. My laptop is a bit slow sometimes. That's it. I don't want to configure network. We don't need that for this uh, demo. Let's log in. That's it. You can see that we have the slash, uh, so the root file system, which is on a Lux partition and a, a set of other subvolumes. This is uh, Alt Micro, so it's relying on ButterFS uh, file system as um, uh, read only. Uh, and to be more precise, immutable uh, OS. So even if I try to touch it myself, creating anything, I'm root, I cannot do it, I cannot touch it because it's also a, a transactional system, it's read only. So we have deployed our system, let's reboot and see if it's able to uh, unlock without me typing a root password. Here you can see TPM to unseal some, some bytes of key material. What's going on? The group to uh, bootloader is asking the TPM chip for specific um, uh, information that we stored in it before. And it's going to use that plus the measurement of group to make sure that it can unlock the, the group configuration and then the rest of the, of the system. So it's unlocked. I'm going to boot it. And as, as you, you have seen, I didn't type any passwords. It's completely automated. And we will check that we are still on the same system, which is still encrypted. That's it. Let's see, oops, it's still read only, so I, I cannot touch it. And it's still on a Lux uh, file system. One thing you might have noticed that one part of the boot is uh, not encrypted. It's a UEFI partition, but it's not a problem because files in this partition are signed uh, with a key. Um, so they cannot be modified. Uh, and if they are modified, they won't be accepted by the, by the boot. So now let's turn off the system and make the equivalent of me stealing the hard drive. So instead of stealing the hard drive, I'm going to remove the TPM chip. So in fact, what I'm doing is I'm creating a new VM. I'm putting the uh, hard drive on another system which doesn't have a TPM chip, or it would be the equivalent of me putting that even on a system with a TPM chip, the data in the chip would be different. So let me start the system on this, uh, so this VM on, a, on another system and see how everything reacts. Three, two, one. It's not automatically unencrypted. So Grub is complaining because it cannot access the TPM chip. We don't have one. If there were a TPM chip but different, then it would not get the proper data. So it could not, it could not be able to uh, decrypt the system. But imagine I didn't store the hard disk. I just put it on a new hardware because the hardware itself 
was completely broken, we had a new one. So obviously the TPM data are different. I still want to boot this system. <coughs> so I'm going to type my recovery password to the com. Wait a few seconds. It's a bit slow because uh, the encryption is done by Grub. Um, so it's not the entire Linux system which is uh, taking care of that right now. It's not a kernel. But still, it was able to decrypt the system. I'm going to boot it, and you will see we are still on the Lux uh, encrypted system for the root file system. So there, we still have we have a very easy way to boot a system on, on a specific hardware, make sure that it's automatically booting without me entering the password. But for safety precaution, we can still we can still uh, access the system on another on another hardware but now we need to enter the credential we used in the in the beginning and let's click OK and as you can see we are still on the encrypted Lux um, uh, image that's it for this demo and now to York about confidential computing Hi, my name is Jörg Rödel, and I'm going to show you the confidential computing capabilities of the Adaptable Linux platform. First, but first of all, what is confidential computing? Confidential computing is about data security. There are several states of data where, they need, where it needs to be protected. First is data in transit. When we transfer data over the network, we can protect it with several technologies, for example, TLS or SSL, so the data is encrypted and cannot be uh, spied on and the data cannot be stolen when transferred over the network. We can secure data while it is um, at rest. When data is stored on disk, we can also encrypt it. We can use disk encryption. That is a technology that is available in uh, many operating systems. So the data cannot be stolen from uh, a disk. But what was missing so far is security for data while it is in use. When data is in use, when we, do, when we want to do computations on the data, we need to load it via network or, via, uh, or, or from the disk. And when we load it, it will be, unencrypted, it will be decrypted and will be stored unencrypted in, in memory from where it could be stolen by a malicious attacker on the same physical machine. And how this can work, uh, is shown in this demo. What you see here is a, is, a, is a virtual machine based on slash 15 SP4. And that machine, that virtual machine is not confidential. So all, all memory uh, of this virtual machine is in clear text. <clears throat> the disk of this virtual machine is encrypted. So everything that is stored on the, on the disk of this virtual machine is encrypted and secure and cannot be stolen because uh, this key is secret. Now we try to store a um, store secret in this, in this VM, a secret password. And we don't want this password um, to, to, to be visible outside of, uh, of our virtual machine. So our new uh, secret file is secure while it is stored on disk because the disk is encrypted. But since the virtual machine is not confidential, the data is still in clear text in memory. And from there, it can be stolen from the host. This is a shell on the host where we can check uh, for, for the VM that is running. You see there is a slash 15 SP4 VM running, which is the VM where we just uh, stored our secret in. And I prepared a, a small demo tool here, uh, which is readmem, written in C++, less than 300 lines of code. And that tool scans memory of uh, virtual machines that are running on, on, on that uh, host and can uh, scan full secrets in there. To use the tool, we first need to find the PID of um, the QRB process that, that runs this virtual machine. So we search the process list for QMU. And we have it here, slash 15 SP4. And the PID of the Q QMU process is 2969. And we can use uh, that PID with the readmem tool. 
First, we specify a pattern to search for in guest memory. In this case, we scanned for secret password. <clears throat> then we um, enter the PID and let the tool run. And we see it finds the secret password in guest memory and can steal it from there. It can not only steal uh, those secrets, it can also uh, search for other patterns. So for example, if we want uh, to steal um, open SSH keys, we can scan for open SSH in the memory of our virtual machine. And the tool will find several open SSH private keys, um, which an attacker could just steal and use um, to further in to further intrude uh, our infrastructure. So all, all of this is possible because the virtual machine is not is not confidential. But with ALP, we, uh, we can run confidential virtual machines where this attack will no longer work. The support in, in ALP for confidential computing is based on AMD Secure Encrypted Virtualization, which is a, technology, a hardware technology that was introduced with AMD EPIC processors. And currently, we support um, running virtual machines based on SCB, which will encrypt guest memory, make it invisible to the hypervisor. Only the guest can see the clear text of its memory. The, the hypervisor cannot see it. it. The hypervisor will only see encrypted data. and Building on that, the, uh, we, we support SCBES or encrypted state, which encrypts, which also encrypts the guest register state in addition to guest memory. Encrypting the guest register state is important um, to secure the guest execution flow. <clears throat> on, the adaptive, on the adaptive Linux platform, we also have uh, the virt scenario tool, which is a tool to create a virtual machine configurations from templates. And one template is for confidential virtual machines. Um, this, this tool was, de was developed for the adaptive Linux platform and can create SCB and SCBES based virtual machines. It also supports attestation. Attestation is a, is a cryptographic proof of uh, the guest state to make sure that the guest only executes um, secure software. And it also includes the virtual scenario launch tool, which can be used uh, to launch a virtual machine configuration that was created with virt scenario. So how does this uh, work in practice? Um, this is a shell on an, on an ALP host. First of all, we need, we need to check whether the hardware is capable of running SCV and SCVES guests. We can check that in the kernel logs. There we see these messages SCV supported and SCVES supported. So this virtual machine is ready to run uh, this host machine is ready to run SCB and SCBES virtual machines. To run them on, on ALP, we need to install the, 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 the libvirt container, which has already happened on this machine. The, the container is installed and running. So we can enter the container and continue with our setup from within the container. In the container, first we create a certificate file, which is bound to the hardware, so we have to create it on every machine. The certificate file is needed for attestation later. So we, we export um, it, we export the certificate chain to a file. We can verify that file and we, see this, we, we can see the, the certificate chain. And we have to tell what scenario where to find uh, this file. We do this by editing um, etc word scenario virthost.yaml, where we add um, the SCV set uh, key and let it point to the, to the certificate file that was just exported. Now the scenario is set up for um, attestation and we can download the guest image we want to run. We use the ALP KVM encrypted image which is set up for encryption and uh, download this image to the libvirt images directory. We choose the encrypted image because um, it does not make sense to have the data on disk unencrypted when it is encrypted in memory because then the, the guest, the, the hypervisor can just steal the data from the disk and not from memory. We have, done, we have downloaded the file and we can um, take the uh, file name 
and start Word scenario. In Word scenario, we give our VM a name. I have Coco demo. We set the VM image as a file we just downloaded. We set it to four vCPUs and to a four gigabyte of memory. And then we call secure VM to create the configuration for the confidential virtual machine. That command will also give us uh, the command to launch that virtual machine. And when we execute this command, it will connect to the word, create the virtual machine, do the attestation, which is, which is important so that we know that the guest was set up in a secure way. So you can see here SCVE is attestation passed, so attestation was successful, guest is set up in a secure uh, way. And now we can boot up the guest and do the initial um, setup, set up, set a root password, set a time zone and set a keyboard layout. And ready is our confidential IP virtual machine. We can log in and check whether it's really a confidential VM. We can check the kernel log again and search for SCV. So we see, see that SCV and SCVES are active as memory encryption features, which means our VM is running encrypted. And we can also check LS block and see that all, all, all our important data is stored in a LUX partition, so it's also encrypted on disk. So now let's store let's store a secret in this virtual machine. and see if it's a confidential. We store another secret password in, in this ALP um, confidential virtual machine. And check from the host whether it's possible to steal that secret. So first of all, we, we uh, have to find the PID of the QMU process again that is driving the confidential virtual machine. In this case, it's 1141. That is the QMU process with our Coco demo VM. PID is 1141. And now we can use the readmem tool again to attack this virtual machine. We search again for secret password. And now the tool starts searching for the pattern in guest memory. But since the VM is confidential, the hypervisor can only see the encrypted data and not the clear text data, and it will not find anything when searching for this pattern. Same when we search for OpenSSH, for OpenSSH keys in the virtual machine. This data is also encrypted in memory and is not, not visible to the hypervisor. The hypervisor cannot steal this data. So this, this virtual machine is secure from this kind of attack. So this was Confidential Computing on ALP. Have a lot of fun.